Hey chess fans, in this video I would like to talk about the delayed Alapin variation in the Sicilian. Um, e4, c5, knight to f3, d6, c3, in the delayed Alapin um, attack. Um, black can play knight to f6 here and attack um, the pawn on e4. I'm taking advantage of the fact that the knight has not moved to c3 to protect this pawn. Um, in general, um, in a lot of these positions, um, the black ideas will be to fianchetto the um, white squared bishop, um, to sometimes also fianchetto the black squared bishop, or alternatively to uh, move the bishop um, to e7 after e6 and another motive is that um, whenever um, white uses this c3 pawn to advance the d4 pawn um, to exchange and then um, do a and, and open the center right away with either um, e4 uh, e5 or d5 Okay, so in this position here, um, white has a number of choices. Um, let's have a look at um, bishop d3 first. Um, the white pawn is attacked and uh, white is protecting it. Um, in this position here, black can take advantage of the fact that the bishop has moved to d3 and pin the knight on f3. The bishop now finds a uh, justification for having moved to d3 to, and is moved to the good square on c2 and um, having a good control on the otherwise weakened pawn on e4. Weakened because um, the knight didn't move to c3. In this position here, black can move the knight to c6 and continue developing normally. Um, White has to untangle his pieces and moves d3 to develop. And in this position here, um, black can play e6. The knight moves in, bishop e7, h3, bishop h5, knight f1. And black opens the position, opens the center with d5. Knight to g3, b6, bishop g6. Uh, queen to e2, this could be um, a position that occurs after bishop d3. Okay, in this position here, uh, white can also play bishop e2, which is the main move, and um, sets up a nasty trap here, because if black takes the pawn, white um, gives a check and wins the knight. So um, black cannot yet take this pawn, but with um, knight b to d7, black is preparing this because now the queen cannot give the check anymore. Um, and now the pawn on e4 is indeed attacked. Um, if white protects the pawn with queen to c2, black can um, prevent d4 by uh, playing queen to c7 because if white now um, played d4, obviously um, he would lose the queen. So instead white um, can castle and now black can plan, uh, play the plan, the standard plan to fianchetto the white squared bishop uh, and prepare this with b6. White can develop here and in this position here white has to play c4 because for example if White played e3, black is ready to play c4 um, and attacking the white position and potentially um, putting pressure on the e4 pawn as well once um, this pawn on um, d3 is eliminated. So white plays uh, c4 and now uh, black can uh, follow the second motive that was mentioned in the beginning to fianchetto the dark squared bishop as well. After knight to c6, 
black um, protects the square on b5 from the knight, h3, and um, black can reach a position like this again that plans to fianchet to both of the bishops. After knight to d7, um, again, uh, the pawn on e4 is now attacked. White can also play d3, and the game could continue with similar plans and reach a position like this. Um, black is um, fian has fianchettoed both of the bishops. And now we have the third motive. As soon as white gets the center, black should look for immediate counterplay, in this case e5. Um, the best move for white is simply to advance the pawn. And now um, black uh, secures the nice square for the knight on c5 by playing a5, so that white cannot grab the square anymore. And um, the position can, um, can turn out to be like this. Okay. So um, in this position here, um, we have looked at queen c2, bishop um, e2, and um, white can um, instead also um, play the aggressive bishop c4, um, and black can just block the pressure on f7 with e6, and here um, white has an aggressive plan with queen e2, threatening to push this pawn forward. Um, black um, wants to get the king out of the center as soon as possible, and this is um, one move order where again white has um, the center, and the best way again is for black to immediately uh, put pressure against the center by advancing the d5 pawn in this case and the best here is to give a check and after this forced line um, black is a little bit better okay um, if um, white wants to prepare bishop d3 without allowing bishop to g4. Uh, white can also play h3 first. In this case um, the most flexible move is knight to d7 putting the threat of um, taking on e4 again. And if now bishop d3 um, white has enough plan to execute his plan and now actually gets a good position because after rook c8 white continues developing black finishes um, his development um, by fianchettoing the dark squared bishop again and castling here and now white has found a good position for the knight but now um, black actually has a good plan of advancing the pawns and um, exert pressure on the c file Okay, um, these are the main moves um, for uh, um, the position after black plays knight f6, and I think in all of those uh, positions black's plans are quite straightforward, but white also has a solid position. And again, keep in mind, the main plans for black are to fianchetto both of the bishops, um, sometimes also um, play bishop uh, g4 if um, white plays an early bishop d3. And sometimes also instead of fianchettoing the dark squared bishop to play e6 and, and bishop e7. And then um, because white has the pawn on c3, if white gets to um, have those two pawns here, it's important to immediately push e5 or d5 as we have seen in the variations to challenge this white center. And then um, the move c3 is a solid move, but also not very dangerous for black. Okay, thanks for watching.